sorry. <laughs> tits and ass, tits, tits and ass. ass. Uh. to a neglected Fanta nozzle at your local Shoney's. I am Bosh Made It, the puniest of gods, tethered by fate to the lovely Ren Likes Moons. We're interrupting your regularly scheduled programming to bring you our mid-season reactions to Loki, the latest direct stream hit on Disney Plus. And today we are exploring identity and the multiple faces of Loki Lofensen, I probably butchered that pronunciation, and why the search for identity makes for a perfectly sympathetic villain. Rick and Morty season five debuted on Father's Day this Sunday. Drop a comment if you'd like to hear about my first reactions here down below. Uh, Lucasfilms dropped a vision trailer. No real hints of a release date yet. Q&A panel coming as soon as July 3rd, so be on the lookout for announcements from Disney. More on Star Wars. A familiar bounty hunter makes a cameo on this week's Bad Batch, but um, no spoilers here. So I would also like to talk about the fact that the Shang-Chi latest trailer also dropped today and um, Wong versus Abomination in a Cage match sounds pretty fucking incredible so uh yeah guys lots of cool stuff coming up later for us to talk about so um hit that subscribe button and uh, ring that notification bell why don't you so we kind of just want to talk about like some of the motivation oh goodness um excuse me sorry everybody <laughs> that was um <laughs> Sorry, that sounded yeah. really fake. Really <laughs> I am like, so I sorry. Like, so I am sorry. <laughs> no, that was good. That was a good one. That was good. Basically, Loki picks up right after Endgame, and I, I'm just catching up everybody else. Um, and I'm also maybe catching up Ren on the timeline as well, because she. It's been a while since she saw Endgame, and that's fine. Um. <laughs> Anyway, moving second. forward, I, have, I, have I will totally reasons. make this a full. <laughs> but um, <laughs> essentially, we are getting a um, so we're getting a. Even though this picks up right after Endgame, we are still getting a pre next snap Loki. So he hasn't he hasn't experienced um basically the deal with Thanos souring. He um hasn't seen the destruction of Asgard yet it's uh yeah so a lot of things um that he gets to miss out on and then basically gets a highlight reel of that episode one uh catching him up with the uh Luki that we were all left with post endgame so um that should basically catch everybody up as far as like timeline which Loki variant we're dealing with um where he falls in these what is called the sacred timeline and that should catch everybody up about here i have <laughs> a lot of questions i have a lot of questions mainly as bashti was saying earlier because i i mean i have seen endgame i've seen infinity wars <laughs> but all of that my issue is that i haven't seen like i actively can't keep up with marvel and i can't keep up with like I was either in like some other country, mainly Japan and stuff like that, and like I just, I just, I don't really have an excuse, but I do have an excuse. I just, it wasn't relevant to me at the time, so I missed out on a lot of things. I saw Loki in Avengers, obviously, and I saw Loki in Iron Man, like back when I was what, like two years old. It's not two years old, but it feels that way because that was ancient. Um, so those are my reasons, and I think my take on this is going to just be a bit unique as well. Um, it's never really not that unique, but I have more insight, I suppose, to Loki from Norse mythology and the overlapping of how Marvel has taken that and portrayed it. So 
I thought that was really cool while watching this. But I have questions. I have questions and I don't really know where to ask them, but my first one, my first main one, and this might be a really controversial question and I'm going to upset a lot of people, but like, Tom Hiddleston, I thought his acting was really bad. Um, and I wasn't sure, um, because again, my understanding is, you know, that this Loki hasn't isn't the same evolution as the Loki that that we know. This is a different variant of Loki. So my assumption was maybe, you know, Tom Hiddleston wasn't like 100% comfortable with this portrayal of this character that he's been acting so long or that he didn't know how to act this character, which would make a lot of sense because he knows this character well, but I thought his acting was honestly just quite awkward. And I'm not sure if that's just me. <laughs> I, but I just thought that I could. No, okay, so, um. <laughs> Sorry, I just, like, no, I that's, uh, stop, that's totally. Like, no, that's totally it. valid. It's so, it's so valid. Okay. Um, a lot of. There, okay, so. I have definitely read Variety and The Hollywood Reporter. Mm -hmm. uh, both have said that Owen Wilson's Mobius is actually the real like charisma magnet mm. of this show. And um, I, as I was uh, kind of doing field research for episode three, there was definitely a, um, it was definitely a ubiquitous sentiment that I, Mobius was missed in mm. episode three. Um, which was pretty rough. I I um I, I kind of found that like a little brutal. I don't think um Tom Hiddleston's portrayal of Loki. I I don't want to say it's bad. Um, it did feel. It felt. I don't even want to say it was campy. It just felt like a little concentrated. You know, like it. It just felt like a very like undiluted like. <laughs> I, I'm just, yeah, I, it really seemed as if he wasn't comfortable, like he didn't know the type of Loki that he was portraying, and I find this really fascinating with this topic of identity, um, because Loki is a very complicated character, even within Norse mythology, like, it's really difficult to define whether, you know, what kind of god he was, in a sense, he was a god of everything, he was just a god, because his identity, like, he just really honestly did whatever he felt like, um, and so I find the, the acting aspect of it, if that was almost, you know, him trying to adjust to this version, this variant of Loki, but then I'm wondering, was Tom Hiddleston always this way with Loki in the past, because I don't remember this. No, basically, it's just, um, he's just leaning into the wrong character motivations, and, um, it, it sucks, but it is kind of, it is what it is, you know, like, it, um, I don't want to say it sucks, it definitely doesn't suck, I love the show, um, I just don't feel like, I just don't feel like the research for, um, the characters, like, basically, I, I just don't feel like he's in, as in touch, um, as, like, uh, WandaVision basically was like I feel like it was that was a like if I had to use those two prod like Disney products with, like a foil of each other yeah. I just feel like there was way more research done and like a, a way more investment in these characters and like their futures in, in the MCU than there kind of is with Loki right now but it's also only episode 3 we're only halfway through the season and like literally they're just kind of you know marathoning from like one disaster to another so things are you know kind of brewing to get like really really interesting because disney does chaos like really well when it comes to like the mcu so i don't i don't know like i think it's just we just got to give him time that's all yeah we just gotta give him some time. no and that makes a lot yeah. of sense again like that was the one question that i wanted to ask you because i mean he's had so many of portraying um, a character evolution from, you know, the Loki that we first met. I swear to God, it was Iron Man. I think. I think. I really think it was. 
was. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, then seeing, you know, up until he's like dying. Oh my God, don't laugh at me. I swear to God. I just like, yeah. So, no, you, I don't think you saw it. I literally, my drink exploded. I didn't see that. <laughs> Um, no, you missed it. It's fine, dude. You're good. Well, I'll just have to go it's back okay. and look at what it was. Um, but yeah, so I think you know he's had he spent so much time with this specific you know variant variant at this point. We'll call them variants because that's what they are. <laughs> what is a Loki? <laughs> what makes a Loki a Loki? Mm -hmm. For later reference. Um, but it's <laughs> what is a Loki? <laughs> is this a Loki? <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> I'm cracking myself up. <laughs> but he hasn't spent so much time with this version of him. And I think, you know, that just really, it, it's, it's, I don't blame him. I just, again, I found it really interesting, which is why I wanted to bring it up. Um, and, you know, to discuss, like, to go into discussing how insecure he is, I'm really, when we saw Loki die, you know, I didn't have when he this, died. When he died, I didn't have this like strong connection to him, you know, because I hadn't seen him. I hadn't like followed his whole entire journey. Um, but there was a sense of like, oh, this is quite shit. Like I felt, in a sense, again, I have an attachment to the Norse mythology version of Loki. So for me, I thought it was just a bit of a, you know, a loss in that sense. Um, so to go backwards and then see this evolution and to see his insecurity because in Norse mythology as well he's a, still a really insecure um, god as well he is so he's half giant he is half god and he basically um, doesn't it's his own fellow gods Azer don't have like expectations towards him they need them they need him when they need him but otherwise they kind of use him and they're just like oh we're gonna blame you on everything even if it wasn't your fault it's like if something bad happens then it must have been the god of mischief but he's not even necessarily the god of mischief so there's one quote um i can't believe if it was like episode oh i can't believe um i can't remember if it's episode two or episode one but it's when Mobius, Mobius is asking him, you know, why is he doing the things that he does? And it's episode one. Episode one. Yeah, it all merges with me. Um, <laughs> and he he thinks about it for a while, and he said, like, I don't enjoy hurting people. I don't enjoy it. I do it because I have to. Um, and I think that really says a lot, like, when a group of people, you know, just believe you to be this one person, and it keeps, I, I, I hate to bring it up, but it's like kind of the same with Kylo Ren, um, <laughs> you end up just giving up and really becoming that person, um, so that's how I really see his character, and I'm really excited to see this variant, one of my other questions to Vashti is, why this variant, why this variant, like, there's so much um, Doctor Who-esque overlapping as well, so I'm like wibbly wobbly, timey wimey, what is this? Oh my god. And there's so much, like, I'm not good with like timey wimey. <laughs> like multiple layers of timelines because my head just starts to explode. But I'm wondering, like, why is this variant more important? Or like being a focus? Like, I think it's too early to tell. Mm -hmm. Um... I think it's it's too early to tell. I don't because we don't we haven't explored really any of the other variants. We have 2012 Loki and we have the Loki that gets a you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like we we don't know and and we have Sylvie, you know, mm -hmm. so it's like we we have literally three variants, you know, with with motivations that um and you know, character and like moral arcs you know that are insanely different you know so it's just like the one that we're dealing with right now is very selfish and you know insecure again you know and um only has a very limited experience on um 
intimacy and affection and again like unconditional love you know things that people you know need in order you know to be good leaders you know so it's like I don't necessarily know mm-hmm. and I'm sure like I mean Kevin Feige is not somebody that like doesn't make you wait without having like an exquisite payoff like that man you know he's he's a chef when it comes to um fan payoff so it's just um I don't know I don't I don't know the significance I just um I empathize you know what I'm saying and I I think we maybe you know we maybe are getting this one because again we're there's a real uptick in sympathetic villainy right now it's very popular so uh and Dizzy is very much capitalizing you know on this yeah. trend so it's yeah. just um the Loki that we get yeah. is for this version you know is rather apathetic but we do get this you know curtain drawback you know through Mobius of um the type of person that he has to be you know in this sacred timeline he's like you will you will cause terror you will cause pain and you will be cruel and that is who you were supposed to be whether you like it or not and I I think we're just that is a very that it's a very interesting Mm -hmm. as far as psychological complexity of sympathetic villainy yeah I am very impressed that Disney is exploring that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That that is that is very mm-hmm. that you know, it's it's a it's a type of philosophy that I didn't expect for a children's show, but here we are. So, you know, I, I don't know, but I like it. I guess <laughs> it's like I'm I, into it. So I don't know. I, I kind of like I love it and I think I've like I've said it before again, like with Kylo Ren that I find it even though if this were actually someone in real life doing this like they couldn't be excused they'd be in jail because they deserve to be in jail it's interesting when you see it in a fantasy environment and I maybe that's a really interesting topic for us to go into like what what differentiates it because we're not going to sympathize with somebody you know in real life like like if this were to happen every day now like we're not going to sympathize sympathize with them so that is that's a really interesting uh discussion but i i I think when it's in a fantasy world and you know that it's fake and you know that there like literally anything can happen and the world can change and evolve especially with marvel you know going like i mean time we're dealing with time and like they can basically just like they can change whatever they want to um it, it there's something like really human about it and maybe I'm just a sucker for like really vulnerable people and like the underdog because like, <sighs> like again like poor Loki everybody was just really beating them like no one had any faith in them well and the, well no I I have to disagree on that point oh, okay. I think Loki his brother loved him like Thor loved him and even though like and and so and they cover that in Thor Ragnarok. Okay, they so then Thor literally was like, I thought it was always gonna be us. But it's like that's that's the thing, is it's like it's just Loki was too ambitious and like he couldn't accept that it was enough because again he lacks a real familiarity with unconditional love. You know, it's like Thor, you know, he almost destroyed an entire race of people I need to watch that Thor. he almost like <laughs> slaughtered most of the frost you you should yeah. um and and you know I really want to do it together because like it's the most romantic of the intellectual of the in, intellectual properties of Marvel's cinematic universe there we go I don't know why that sentence was so hard but it was um but yeah so it's just like he had a good brother and I don't even want to talk about Frigga she always saw him as her son it was never a question that that was her son they communicated through magic because she wanted him to be happy 
when she could not be there. So she literally taught him things that he not he would not have experienced otherwise so they could have a bond and understand how special that their love was. Like he had a lot. It's just when ambition, you know, when you have a deep rooted insecurity with who you are supposed to be, um, that gets, it, it supersedes everything. And I think that's, that's what he is unfortunately understanding now in a really tragic way, but he can't undo it. He can't do anything with the lessons. And so that's, that's what I'm really interested in is finding out if they're going to keep him dead because it's like, if they keep him dead, um, I don't, I don't necessarily, I'm not a hundred percent that he isn't going to break bad because you, you become pretty nihilistic once you understand how you're going to go, you know? And so I'm just really curious once the finality, you know, of his mortality really sets in God or not mischief or not, you know, I'm, um, I'm really interested to see like what decisions he makes after that, you know, because on Lamentis, um, they're faced with their own mortality again. And I want to see what happens, what desperation does. I really think that Sylvie being there is going to make it really interesting. So I don't, I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm just here. I'm just, I'm riding shotgun. I'm I'm just here for a good time, not a long time, you know? (laughs) So then is his mother not Laufi? His oh. mother is Frigga, okay. as far as he knows, because he was abandoned by the. Okay. Oh no, um, Lalfi is his is his father. That's the his frost giant biological father. Oh That's my god, he that's hilarious! By. He's abandoned by his people. Can I tell you what it is in Norse mythology? Yeah. Lalfi is his mother in Norse mythology. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and his father, his father's a giant. Um, I actually, I think I have his name written down, but I am so like, I don't have all the names memorized. This one's quite long, but, um, what's really interesting too, is that, um, it's more common that, uh, so Scandinavian surnames were traditionally not so much more anymore, but you would take the father's first name and then put like Gothar son after it. But in Norse mythology and in Marvel, you know, it being... <laughs> um, lau, 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 lau. Please edit this out. It's Lauf. Laufensen. Laufensen, yeah, Laufensen, because Laufi's son, Laufi's son. Um, they took the the mother's name, his mother's mm-hmm. name, and did son. So that was quite progressive for that time and non traditional, actually. Um, so Laufi's son. Yeah. So that's really interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then, like, I. And we'll go into it like whenever you're ready to discuss like gen like gender identity as well with him. Like we, I can, I have like I have more to say about it as well. Um, but yeah. Oh please. Yeah. I mean, he's he he's everything in the comics, and um, I do love that they um, Disney is so strategic. They literally um basically are announcing like these two um not only gender fluid characters but they're also announcing um two potentially pansexual characters and so i disney literally did that during pride month which i i'm just like you you guys you you guys guys. (laughs) um, yeah i thought that was really cool so yeah yeah finally did it um uh no i'm um yeah so um and like i think i like told you about this as well as like my take will probably definitely always like have a connection to norse mythology because i find that connection like fascinating and i think maybe like i honestly probably should just go and read the comics as well because i would love to see you know how it's portrayed um but everything within Miss Norse mythology that we have a collection of because traditionally it was all like oral or through song, well, which is oral, oral is such a gross word. I'm so immature. I hate saying it. 
Anyway, <laughs> it was not through written text. Um, so when you know Christian man- missionaries were like doing their thing, um, this guy named Snorri, which I think is like the greatest name ever, he was a huge fan of you know conserving uh, Norse mythology. So he went around collecting these stories. And so we basically, you know, like with Greek mythology, we have everything. But with Norse mythology, we basically have like just two books, um, which are called the Eddas. And they're quite short, like it's kind of like limited. There's a lot of like interpretation, you know, and like maybe local towns in like Norway and Sweden and Iceland and like Denmark will have their own like personal stories um, interchanging. But one of the things that was really like interesting was and you know maybe and there's always a question as to how much christian like influence that he he the he said that he was trying to keep it as you know like accurate as possible but you know like how much of it was interpreted or written down with that christian influence but um even in these these edas the pronouns that were used with uh loki would transition between female and male pronouns so it you know gave that that impression especially when he was you know turning into a horse to give birth to a horse he turned into a female horse to give birth to a horse like he was very gender fluid he was gender fluid in Norse mythology and like that's really really cool and it's really cool that um Snorri like you know kept this and you know whether or not this is something that was like you know it's it's hard to judge um what we take with uh, the access to mythology that we have but like i thought that was cool it was like yeah um yeah so by the way Bashti, um if you didn't know um <laughs> and i think i told you this he literally turns into a female horse to get impregnated 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 impregnant imp- he wants to get pregnant. Yeah, pregnant. Yeah, he needs to because he wants to distract his foe, basically. So he like sedu- goes in and seduces like his horse enemy, and he gets pregnant. But in order to give birth, he turns into a female horse to give birth. So he has um he he has a lot of animal children. So Fenrir is one of them, which is a wolf. But like yeah, I mean he's a shape shift. He's a shape shifter. Um and also like a she, which is like. And so I'm really, really, like, happy that Marvel kept this, that they, that, that they just, like, kept this information. Basically, I do love that, um, well, I don't want to say that, like, how do I put that? I do love that um, they are, you know, like announcing and confirming into canon that um, these characters are, you know, gender fluid and, um, you know, they're definitely pan, you know, bisexual yeah. based, um, LGBTQ aligned, you know, whatever uh, Disney, whatever corporate language they have to use around it. But um, no, I, I, um, I definitely love that. I just, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, you say Disney trying to get around actually like you know because they're they're sneaky they're like they're slithery slithery snakes well they, to, like, they're not gonna just no. come out and I mean yes but it's just like it, it's it is a victory you know what I'm saying so I'm oh, not gonna yeah. um yeah. take away from that but um but they definitely took their time with it you know um they could have introduced this concept much earlier i am either way you know i'm not gonna suck i'm not gonna you know suck the air out of the sails you know for it um i just think it's really interesting how they are kind of getting a threefer you know you've got three identities essentially i'm sorry no well yeah you have essentially three identities wrapped up into the storyline that are all potential variants of loki you have lady loki sylvie and loki himself um and that whole comic background is that um sylvie aka enchantress 
um, is basically something conceived by Loki. Like he made her, and oh. as like a, a type of joke, you know, as far as like his opinion <laughs> like on um, existence. And then uh, Lady Loki was a like this disembodied spirit that was basically like right that was basically like born um i think like reborn after ragnarok but no um so we have like three storylines that kind of wrapped up in this you know and then that was like almost kind of like the the buffer you know of um disney kind of hinting at this you know like gender fluidity and like whatnot you know um because i like it's my understanding like we know that he had the ability you know to appear as like anybody that he wants but yeah. if i remember correctly disney only had him in all the avengers films like he was only impersonating like other male characters like we only see him like impersonate like captain america and things like that so it's like we didn't well. know for a fact if it was candon you know change like um gender identity and like all of that as well so it was just um not that it matters but you know it was just uh disney has this way of just like hinting that things are possible but like not really showing like the full spectrum of like how that would work and like yeah. a perfectly like um perfectly respectful um exploration of like gender fluidity as a concept you know what i'm saying like you know they say that there's evidence but they only show it like along the binary and you know not this ability for him to like represent himself as anything or any, anybody as he wants so it's just um it was just nice that they did it i wish that they hadn't you know they didn't need three people to do it but you know whatever they have to do to make it child friendly and to yeah. make it like a safe enough conversation for parents whatever but um no it was it was interesting i just um it just kind of stinks like that we might potentially get robbed of like the enchantress like storyline because they're trying to like pump, like you know condense her and lady loki yeah but um no, I mean it's cool like I said little wins you know I'll, I'll take it yeah I think that as well um I mean they explained it really nice as well of how you know love works in love works in Asgard of how it's not anything really comparable to how humans experience love which really it, it kind of encompasses I I thought it was like you know um like Disney expressed it quite well like it wasn't you know it wasn't blatant but it was just that obvious enough like you know um and then I think it was I can't remember the specific quote but it's just like is there a future prince princesses blah 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 and he's like a bit of both and then I assume it's the same for you as well um so I thought that description of how you know love works is quite you know beautiful because love really transcends it all <laughs> well the thing is Jane Jane Foster isn't isn't Asgardian so um Thor fell in love with a human being like mm. Jane fucked up his whole life he was he was hurt <laughs> he's down dog don't I ask him if he's that. hurt I you know what I'm saying that. like yeah. he was really fucked up like over the human mm. I just think that this is something that Loki personally struggles with mm -hmm. no I just think it comes down to his insecurity issues you know self value um cause again we see hints of it in, in Sylvie you know when she's hesitant to talk about you know her her previous life you know what i'm saying her upbringing you know she was obviously like, neglected a lot because she had to teach herself all of her own magic you know what i mean like it was just it was rough you know so i think that his experience of love is singular in a sense which it often is you know is hard to convey i think that's why people are so inherently afraid of it but um to answer your question about my predictions, like to be honest, I think with the like the limited back knowledge, like background knowledge that I have, um, like I have a very basic knowledge of what has happened in the Asgard universe, um, very basic knowledge, and so 
watching this, I mean, I'm really curious, obviously, in terms of, you know, why this variant is important. And I suppose because there is a focus on this variant, my prediction then would be that it's somehow going to, you know, I mean, their goal right now is to destroy the TVA, which reminds me of the Jedi in a sense of how it's just very problematic. Um, but aside from that, <laughs> I think that it's going to maybe allow his variant or this variant to overwrite the previously existing variant or somehow, like, yeah, honestly, probably just get rid of the TVA. So, me personally, I don't even think that Mobius is actually Mobius. I think Mobius is actually King. And that all of this is Kang basically orchestrating chaos so he can usurp the TVA and basically become the Time Lord that he is in the comics. He's the Time Lord! And so I think that Loki is going to be presented with an opportunity where it's like, I did tweet Time Lord. (laughs) (laughs) And I, but basically, Loki is going to be presented with a choice yet again because we do see him kind of just pursuing power, pursuing power, pursuing power, right? Like, um, you know, he, the minute that he saw that Sylvie was the superior Loki, he immediately tried to join sides with her because, again, it's power grab. He's trying to essentially use her to get access to the TVA and cause disruption and chaos and basically so he can take over it and rule so it's just it always defaults to him being you know trying to usurp power from someone else and I think that Kang you know in all of his genius is basically going to know this is going to know that you can basically set a clock you know to the fact that Loki is going to betray someone and he's just using it as a guise to basically take over and so they're gonna he's gonna make those two do all the hard work And then they're going to show up to try to take over the TVA or destroy it. And it's going to be fucking Kang. And he's going to be like, thank you for your service to the TVA. I am the Time Lord now. I am the captain. And so, like, and that's just, that's going to be what it is. So, um, I don't, I don't know... And basically my point is is that Loki is going to be forced with a choice. Is he going to continue to pursue the next Back, like the next step in you know taking total control and trying to figure out a way to use her power or is he going to find value in himself and try to take control of his own timeline I don't I don't know like basically what his character arc is going to be because it's, it's two part we have to figure out if people really are who they say that they are because now that everybody is a variant at the TVA and has no memory of their previous life we and with Mobius already having like multiple um Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're like clones or like I I have to look at the comics and do more research on this so sorry everyone for not doing due diligence we're just excited about the series um but yeah I just have but he has multiple versions of himself so it's like there's a really good chance that he's competing with himself you know to be the left hand of the judge you know or there's a really good chance that the other person (laughs) people do think it's gonna be end up being Loki but I don't think that's it I don't think that's a good enough plot twist and I think what it is is that um what I think that it is is that the the other person that the judge has working for her, I think that's the real Mobius, yeah. and that the Mobius that we're basically riding backseat to is actually Kang in disguise. So it's just like I I I think there's a reason that they're leaning so heavy into Loki, basically constantly playing follow the leader so he can just betray and usurp power i just i think there's a reason why they're leaning really heavy into it and it's because it's going to be the thing that defines his character 
um, in this variant timeline? You know, do I want to keep being this like insecure version of myself that's like thirsty for power and just betrays anybody and everybody and I'm just alone? Or do I just want to accept my fate and like go live it out in like another timeline where it's like if you die, you know, and they just Rick and Morty like body snatcher it where it's just like cool, we'll bury him in the backyard and then we get President Loki. Like you didn't say, like, I don't know. I just um that's that's me. That's that's what I think is honestly gonna happen is like we have to see if people really are who they say they are to be able to predict what Loki's gonna do. Because if there are even more powerful beings at play, I don't think he's mature enough in his character development to say no. No personally so yeah that's just me but i don't know i honestly just like yeah i really hope that i think i mean i don't want him to go down that route sorry um i don't want him to go down that route i would love to see i love redemption arcs they're just such a crybaby for redemption arcs i'm sorry guys like i like happy endings but that's just me as a human i love like i i get so emotionally attached to things that it's really difficult for me to accept like sad sad circumstances um which is why i love disney movies and cartoons and korean dramas because there's always a happy ending you get a happy ending you get a happy ending you get a happy ending oh, yeah. like, so i'm just like i hope you <laughs> So probably so ignorant. <laughs> Next episodes, we're kind of we're playing with a, with a few different concepts. Um, I am really obsessed with how to survive certain um horror situations so that is a possible um next episode we still have to cover like yasuke i know that i keep saying oh we're gonna talk about how significant and how amazing um this portrayal was and it's such a gem and thank you netflix and i've literally been waiting for two years i swear to god guys it's coming we just um ran into some hiccups with it so please just be patient um we're also going to be, we're considering covering um, Neon Genesis and basically existentialism in apocalyptic, apocalyptic times. So um, give us a second, you know, because that is quite a heavy, you know, subject. And um, so we m- may do that next episode. I, it could be the episode after. We're just kind of shopping around. I have so finish. much Neon Genesis Evangelion here as well. So like I might get... Like, I've been meaning to cosplay Asuka. I really want to cosplay Kaoru now, but like, so maybe I'll get my wig ready. We also are considering a, um, a Handmaid's Tale react, but um, that is a more comprehensive project. So a lot of steps, a lot of seasons. I think we're talking about five seasons of, you know, 45 to 60 minute episodes. And it has been um labeled as basically was it trauma porn so um we just want to take care of ourselves as we you know do a plot analysis for this subject matter so be patient with us if we'll make more announcements as we get closer to tackling that project but if it is something that you guys are really interested in now that the fifth season has released uh drop a comment because um we love feedback we love production so um without further ado i think that is going to conclude the episode i hope that you have enjoyed this um analysis of loki with us we'll probably do a part two to this at the end of the season to just get our full thoughts because we are really on the we're on the cusp of greatness the show is about to take off and i think it's really going to change directions and so we would also like to see if our opinions of the series change as well um to see if owen wilson really is the heel of the show um we need to know we need to know if he's going to be the strongest thing and i also need to see if this man gets a goddamn jet ski did they snatch this man off of a jet ski (laughs) i know tom hiddleston i need to know better Uh, (laughs) with this character yeah <laughs> let's <laughs> let us hope all right guys without further ado it has been a pleasure fangirling with you and as always we look forward to seeing you in the future goodbye tater gang see you next time bye amazing i love
loves that cat right, I... that you made. <laughs> Bruh, that was <laughs> Percy is like the best subject matter. But oh geez, I feel like I'm really short um, in here. Sorry, I have to like sit on my knees because like I'm only like five two. <laughs> Fuck, I'm such a I tiny person. Um, like I'm not cool. All I'm right. Not ready for you to be five two. <laughs> You're gonna just do this like the entire time. You're gonna be like, oh my little armrest. 